ACT includes a setup assistant that guides you through the establishing fundamental preferences in ACT, such as the database to open, the word processor to use, and your preferred email client. In this lesson, you'll learn how to use the setup assistant to configure ACT for your first use. The first time ACT is launched after installation, the Getting Started Assistant appears. If you have since closed it and would like to restart the wizard, you can do so at any time by clicking Help and then selecting Setup Assistant. You can click Next on the Welcome screen to begin setting up ACT. The Setup Assistant presents two options, Create Database or Convert Database. If you are just beginning to use ACT, you'd select Create Database. If, on the other hand, you're upgrading from an older version of ACT, such as version 3x through 6x, then you may want to select Convert to launch the database conversion wizard. If you already have a database, then you don't have to convert the database, you actually just need to open it directly to upgrade the database. So you can click Next and complete the wizard, and then open the database directly after exiting the setup assistant. So in this example, you can click Next, and the email setup portion of the wizard begins. The next series of questions are related to the preferred email client. The ACT email client is a lightweight client that enables you to integrate ACT features with your existing internet mail account, while the Outlook option is recommended because it gives you the power of Outlook while providing rich integration features such as attaching Outlook emails to ACT contacts or copying calendar data between the applications. ACT also supports integration of other clients such as Lotus Notes or Eudora with the ACT email client. If you do not see your email client in this list, then exit the wizard and verify that the email application was installed prior to the installation of ACT. If you see the appropriate email system, you'd select it and then click Next. For this example, you can select Microsoft Outlook and then click Next. After clicking Next, you're prompted to select the ACT database to integrate with Outlook as an additional address book. If you do not add an ACT database as an address book, you will not be able to take advantage of the ACT and Outlook integration features. To browse and select a database, click the Add button, then Browse, locate the appropriate database, click Open, and if required, type in your username for that database and password, then click OK. Notice you can add up to three ACT databases as address books to Outlook. So you can actually browse out for more if you have other databases you'd like to add as additional address books in Outlook. Click Next to continue the wizard, and on the Email Editor screen, select your preferred email editor. Since Outlook was selected for email integration, it's appropriate to select it here as the editor. If you had selected Internet Mail or another email client, the ACT email editor would be the appropriate selection. You can click Next to continue. On the Email Record History screen, you'll select how you'd like to record history when mail is sent and also what level of detail should be appended to a contact with the history. So if you choose to record history when you send mail, you can select the type of history that will be recorded. None, Email Subject Only, Subject and Message, or Subject Message and any attachments you're sending. The recommended option is just the subject and the message. The Make History Private option will make all history items private to your ACT database user, meaning other users of a shared ACT database will not be able to access your history items, even if the contact record is public or otherwise accessible to them. Click Next to continue, and the email attached to ACT contacts has some similar options, however these options impact how received messages are handled. For example, you may receive mail from one of your contacts and using ACT's Outlook integration features, you're able to attach that message to one of your ACT contacts. When you click the toolbar button or execute that command, you're selecting here what type of history that ACT will record. Your choices are email subject only, subject and message, or subject message and all attachments. You can select the recommended option. Again, you have the make history private option. Something that's different on this screen are some options for a feature called Quick Attach. The Quick Attach feature attempts to process all mail in your inbox, attaching it to the corresponding ACT contact in your database. The question here is which contacts should be associated with the history item. And the options are the from contact only, so in other words, whoever sent the message, the from and to contacts on the message, the from and carbon copy contacts, 
for every contact listed in the message. You can select the recommended option again. And in addition to that setting, you can also determine whether or not contacts should be created if they're not found in the ACT database. So for example, if you've received a message from a new individual that's not yet in your ACT database, selecting this checkbox would create a contact when you perform the quick attach process. And lastly, if you're on the list of contacts, you can define whether or not you should be excluded from history creation by selecting Exclude My Record from History. Once you've specified history attachment preferences, you can click Next. And on the Email Activity Invitation Settings screen, you can specify how ACT should handle iCalendar invitations. iCalendar is a vendor-neutral standard for appointment and activity invitations. When you send invitations from ACT, you'll want to select the application that will display the alarm. Essentially, you want to consider which application you're likely to be using when the alarm rings. So your choices are either ACT, Outlook, or both ACT and Outlook. In the second half of this screen, you're specifying how ACT should handle incoming invitations. So when you receive an invite, you can select how the activity should be created. Choices include None, so don't create an activity in ACT, automatically create an activity in the default database, or edit and create the activity, which is recommended. This option will pop up a dialog box where you can specify any details about the activity before clicking OK and saving it to your ACT database. And lastly, when you create an activity from an Outlook invitation, the attendees are automatically matched to your ACT contacts, but if the contact doesn't yet exist in the database, do you want ACT to create one for you? Click Next. And on the Word Processor screen, you're selecting the word processor you'd like to use to create and edit documents, such as letters or other documents you might create from within ACT. So you can choose either the Microsoft Word Processor or the ACT Word Processor. Then click Finish to complete the assignment of your selected preferences and begin using ACT. If you ever want to modify these selections, you can either rerun the Setup Assistant by clicking Help and choosing Setup Assistant, or by selecting Tools and then Preferences. The settings we've actually configured are on the Email tab and the Communication tab. In this lesson, you've learned how to use the Setup Assistant to identify a database to open when launching ACT, your preferred email client, and word processor.